My name is Dan Verhoeven, I'm a freediving cameraman, and this is the Insta360 1R. And this is the Insta360 1R. Wait, this is the underwater housing for the Insta360 1R. And this is the underwater housing for the Insta360 1R. Wait, okay, so this is all a bit confusing. Insta360 came out with a camera that is three cameras. It is a 360 camera, as the name would suggest. It is an action camera, and it is a one inch camera action camera, right? What it is, is a modular camera. So there's a battery part, there's a brain part, and there's a lens part. The brain is always this part, part but you can change the battery and the lens to your liking. So it can be a 360 lens or an action lens or a high quality one inch sensor action camera. That positions the Insta squarely against the GoPro Hero 8. So let's compare them. I'll go over the main aspects of these cameras. I'll dive a little bit into their specifications, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, prices, build quality, image quality, um, see if we can come to some sort of conclusion here. So Insta360 is, as the name would suggest, um, mostly known for their 360 cameras. They're quite good at that. It gives you the option to shoot 5.7K all around, and then you can reframe from wherever you choose it to frame to. Um, it's quite easy to learn, quite fun to play with. Um, it can be a bit gimmicky but it's useful for certain shots. GoPro also do a 360 camera. It's called the GoPro Max. That maxes out at 6K. Um, so it gives you a few more pixels to play with. The main difference between this one and the GoPro is this one comes or comes with, you can get a housing for it that's waterproof to 30 meters, whereas the GoPro can only go to five meters. And as far as I know, there's no housing for it. So if you want to do 360 type footage uh, underwater, you're best off with the Insta. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on the 360 aspect of this camera in the rest of the video. What I want to focus on is action because I'm going to compare it to the GoPro and the GoPro is the world's leading brand for action cams, isn't it? It has been for a couple of years. Um, and it's getting better and better with each iteration. Um, this, we're up to GoPro 8 here now, and they have been getting better and better at stabilization. They managed to do 4K at 60 frames a second, um, quite rugged, quite wa uh, waterproof down to 10 meters. You know, GoPro is the name to beat in the action camera segment. So I wanna see what the Insta 361R can do that. The Insta can do 5.3K at 30 frames a second. It can do 4K at 60 frames a second. I reckon the stabilization is as good as the GoPros. And despite it being a modular system, it's also waterproof, down to five meters. Um, as far as specs are concerned, I'd give it to the Insta360 over the GoPro because of that 5.3K and because of the bigger sensor. Next up are the housings. Both Insta and GoPro do housings for the camera, which comes in handy because, you know, five meters or 10 meters, it's not quite deep enough for most divers and free divers. The housings are incredibly similar. Um, the main difference is the GoPro's housing is $50 and the Insta's housing is $80. I don't quite know why the Insta is more expensive. It is a little bit more of a different design and a little bit more, it's a little bit bigger, but it seems to be made out of the same kind of stuff. And yeah, I don't understand the price difference. That said, $80 for underwater housing in my world, that's not a lot of money. GoPro is downright cheap for that. Not just because it's cheaper, but I have to give the advantage to the GoPro. I've shot with GoPros for, I think seven or eight years now. 
I started with the three plus, I had the four, I skipped the five, but I had the six, the seven, now the eight, and I've never had an issue with the housings. Like you can just put it in there, click it out, and click it shot and go shoot. Never had a flooding. First time I shot with the Insta, I took it into the water and it flooded. Not much, a couple of droplets. The camera is waterproof, so no damage done, but you know, makes you think like, ooh. It doesn't make you trust it instantly. Let's put it that way. Um, after that, I've tried it again. I took it down to 30 meters and it was fine. And I haven't had an issue since. Overall, I think the GoPro housing, seeing that it's a slightly thicker ring and that it's much cheaper than the Insta housing, gets my vote for this one. And the same goes for the build quality of the cameras. If you look at the Insta360 and like how flimsy the O-rings are to protect, for example, the battery connection and like how small all the, the waterproofing is, it seems a little bit scary. It seems a little bit flimsy. Um, the GoPro, when you open it, there's more waterproofing. It feels more solid in the hand. I mean, it seems like a better built uh, a better, better built camera. I'm saying seems because the first month I had this, after not that many dives, this started happening. And it's only on this side of the opening. The other one is still perfect, but it's a weird thing. Like why would that corrode? Why would that come off? It doesn't impede its functionality, like it still attaches to everything, so it doesn't didn't mess it up or anything. But hmm. despite that little hiccup, I'd still give build quality to the GoPro. It just feels like more of a more of a camera that you can throw in your back and it'll be alright. The Insta seems a little bit more flimsy. And when it comes to battery life, I let both cameras run for as long as they could on fully charged batteries. Uh, the GoPro managed 63 minutes, the Insta was 49 minutes, so advantage to the GoPro. It has to be said I was running them both at full resolution, so GoPro at 4K at 30 frames a second, Insta at 5.3K at 30 frames a second, so the Insta had a slightly heavier workload. Still, I think in daily use you're gonna get a little bit more battery life out of your GoPro than you're gonna get out of your Insta. So battery goes to GoPro. Now when it comes to stabilization, it's a similar story of similarities. Um, I took them for a walk down the beach, which is a tricky, um, tricky thing to do for a camera, especially since it's a stony beach. Um, I had them mounted on the same platform, so there was no advantage to either of them there. And I think they came up with very similar results, um, very impressive results both. Uh, check out this video, it's, they, they both look really smooth, they both look like they're doing pretty much an equal job there. I was very impressed with both of them. So stabilization, I'd say it's a draw. Yeah. Where things change though is image quality. I think that's what sets the Insta apart from the GoPro, especially if we look at the one inch edition. A one inch sensor is four times bigger than the sensor that is in the GoPro. Now bigger doesn't always mean better, like a bigger painting isn't always better than a smaller painting, but a larger canvas does make it easier to, for you to paint more details into the picture, doesn't it? That's what's going on with the Insta. Because it has a bigger sensor, it seems to handle details better. And by details, I don't just mean smaller things. I also mean details in the highlights, details in the shadows, and details in the colors. The Insta seems to capture details that this GoPro simply doesn't. Check out this footage. It's the same dive, they were both mounted on the same pole. And the Insta manages to do highlights, to not clip the highlights, where the GoPro washes out, while at the same time seeing more things in the shadows that the GoPro doesn't see. So, and you can get better colors from it as well, I think, in the edit. Um, 
I shot them both in a sort of a log profile, um, so you can edit them afterwards. And the inside gives you much more room to edit your footage. It starts bending less quickly, there's more color information, there's more light information. The dynamic range on this Insta is very impressive. To me, when it comes to image quality, the Insta is a clear winner. It does come with some drawbacks though. Because of how the Insta shoots and because it's, uh, it, it needs to be able to do 360 footage as well as normal footage, it, um, it records into an INSV file, which is a weird file. Um, you can't just open it on any program, like you need the Insta app to open it. And then from the Insta app, you can export it as a normal kind of picture or a normal kind of video. It's a bit of an extra step that they make you go through. If you want a quick and easy workflow, it, it's a bit of a hassle. It will cost you extra minutes. It will cost you extra steps. Like it, it interrupts your workflow a little bit. That's a drawback of that file. GoPro doesn't have that drawback. GoPro is a normal MP4 file. You can, you can throw it into any kind of workflow and you'll be fine. So if you're just using the Insta app to publish your video and you're just using the Insta to shoot, you're probably going to be fine. But if you're going to go into Premiere or into Final Cut or using any kind of other program or any kind of other camera to also shoot, like for example, your phone or you shoot it on a big camera as well, then the GoPro is the easier to use. And like for general ease of use, I'd give it to GoPro. Now, when it comes to photos, the Insta again has that benefit of the larger sensor. Um, the larger sensor means a greater dynamic range. It means more information. And that just leads to more pleasing photos. GoPro does a really good job at photography in that it, straight out of camera, it produces pleasing colors. They've been doing this for years. They know what they're doing. But they both shoot raw, and I'd advise you to shoot raw photos. So in edit, you can do more with the Insta360. For example, check out this photo that I took um, of my view. Um, same, at the same time, the GoPro, you can see, like the colors are pleasing, but as soon as you zoom in, you can see artifacts in the sky, you can see weird, weird little things. That's a result of trying to cram that many pixels into a smaller sensor. Whereas when you take the Insta, you zoom in on the sky, it's still smooth, everything is, uh, everything is pleasant and, and the pixels are not quite as visible. There's no binning, there's no weird artifacts. That's a direct result of having a larger sensor and giving your pixels a bit more room to breathe in. Um, you get less artifacts, less strangeness. The colors might be more pleasing on the GoPro side, but in photography, I mean, you're supposed to edit your photos anyway, so you can you can get them to be however you want them to be. Um, neither of these cameras are ideal for pictures though. Like, they can take pictures, but as photo cameras, I don't think they're made to be photo cameras. And the reason I say that is, like they both have this relatively small shutter button that is requires quite a hard press. Now, if you do that and you just have a single shot, it's almost impossible to do that without moving the camera, which means when you take a shot, it's either slightly blurry because you move the camera or the framing is not as you wanted it because you moved the camera. A way to go around this, and what I tend to do is to shoot in burst but the, the weird thing that happens when you shoot in burst is, well, let me show you. For example, with the GoPro, you shoot a burst of 30 frames. And then guess how long it takes for those 30 frames to be calculated and written to the memory card. It's more than a minute. That's insane. Think about this. If you're a photographer and you want to use this as your camera and you do a burst, 30 frames in a second, and then you have more of a minute 
of not being able to take pictures. But then what if a, a whale comes up to you? What if your model all of a sudden does a once in a lifetime amazing backbend or you, you won't be able to capture it because your camera is busy writing to the card. So you say like you do a burst of 10. That still takes more than 20 seconds to write to the card. So you do a burst of five, that still takes more than 10 seconds. Every time you take a photo, it takes seconds for it to write to the card. Same goes for the Insta. Their writing speed is just, they can't keep up with you. So bursting, burst photography is the answer to the problem of like the difficult shutter button. But then you can't really use the burst either because then your camera is out of function for seconds, if not minutes. So they're not ideal photo cameras. They're great action cameras. For photography, I'd say go somewhere else. That said, if you have to take photos with them, the Insta is the clear winner. As for the price, that's where things get a bit tricky again because of that modular system. So say if you just want this camera, the Insta 361R one inch edition, that's $550. Compare that to the GoPro, $350 is quite a big difference. Now put in the housing and you're looking at like a $230 difference. That's quite big, but it's not a fair comparison in that you can get this one and the 360 attachment for I think $700. If you want a GoPro and a GoPro Max to do 360, you're looking at 350 plus 450 is $800. So then all of a sudden the Insta becomes the better deal. So it kind of depends on what you want. If you want an action camera and also a 360, Insta is a better deal. If you just want an action camera, GoPro is a better deal. So price-wise, is it a draw? It's either a draw or it's a slight advantage to GoPro. GoPro is definitely the cheaper to begin with. But if you want 360, it's, no. well, yeah, complicated. So for an action camera, which one should you get? If you want a point and shoot action camera that you can just toss in your bag, the GoPro is probably the camera for you. In auto mode, I think it outperformed the Insta in that it had nicer colors, it's easier to use, it feels more rugged. But if you're looking for ultimate image quality, the Insta is better than the GoPro by a few steps, I think. If you put it in log and edit it afterwards, I think you'll get better results on the Insta than you get on the GoPro. Personally, I'm gonna switch. I've dived with GoPros for eight years, but the Insta gives you better dynamic range, better colors, more room to play with and edit. I like how innovative it is. I like that you can switch it to 360. There's a, a playful element to being able to take it apart and to switch it around. But most of all, I like how well it handles things like deep dives. Below 10 meters, you really need to edit your footage quite hard. And the Insta seems to give me more room to play with because of that bigger sensor. It handles difficult situations like deep dives quite well. And that's why for me, it's the best action camera out there. Check out this video that we shot on Insta360. And if you'd like, compare it to this video, which we shot on GoPro. And also consider subscribing here. And I'll see you on the next video. Hope you have saved dives. Bye.